today, the state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, resistance fighters Melina and Misak Manushan to be inducted into the Pantheon, Sons of Western Armenia, Anahit Martirosian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia. Pace will discuss the issue of the birds or road, what expectations have been formed in Artsakh, UN High Commissioner emphasized the importance of free movement through the birds or road, French politicians urge to support Artsakh, today's Leonid Asgazian's Memorial Day, the exhibition halls of Hovanesa Ivazovsky are reopening in the National Gallery. Armenian resistance fighter Misak Manushian is to be inducted into the Pantheon. A person close to Emmanuel Macron confirmed to France Inter on Saturday. The Pantheonization will take place on 21 February 2024. Emmanuel Macron advisor confirms Misak Manushian will be admitted to the Pantheon. The president is due to make his decision official this Sunday on the 83rd anniversary of the June 18th appeal, according to Jean Pierre Sakun, founder of the Manushian and the Pantheon Support Committee. The Pantheonization will take place on 21 February 2024, 80 years after the execution of Misak Manushian. He will be accompanied by his wife, Meline, who was also a member of the resistance. Misak Manushian at the origin of the Manushian group. The Armenian resistance fighter was arrested on 16 November 1943 and executed on 21 February 1944, along with 21 other resistance fighters at Mont Valerien in Suresnes, a refugee in France after the genocide of Armenians in Western Armenia in 1915. Misak Manushian the Manushian group. This group of foreign resistance fighters close to the French Communist Party was one of the most active armed movements of the resistance. Misak Manushian's wife Meline is buried in the Ivry Cemetery near Paris. She also was a survivor of the genocide against Armenians, having joined him in France in 1925 and then joined the resistance. Just before he was executed, her husband wrote her a moving letter. Good luck to those who will follow us and test the sweetness of tomorrow's freedom and peace. I am sure that the French people and all freedom fighters will be able to honor our memory with dignity. You have inherited French nationality. We have earned it. Anahit Martirosian, the commander of the Anahit detachment, was born in 1971 in the legendary village of Chartaklu. This village has given Armenia and the world two marshals of the Soviet Union, 12 generals and seven heroes of the USSR. Anahit was destined to follow in the footsteps of these heroes, embodying the qualities of Armenian fighting spirit and independence. Living in Baku, Anahit and her husband heard and witnessed terrible incidents every day. They decided to take their children and move to Armenia. On the morning of October 27, 1989, as they were on their way no more than two blocks from their apartment building a savage mob, including their neighbor's son, blocked their pass and beheaded her husband, Victor, in front of her and her two sons. Miraculously, Anahit and her sons managed to reach the airport from where they took a flight to Yerevan and eventually settled in the village of Bagratash and her parents' hometown. Determined to seek revenge, Anahit decided to join the front lines. However, at the assembly post, she was was initially rejected because she appeared much younger than her actual age of 24 and weighed only 45 kg. However, thanks to her knowledge of Azerbaijani, she was able to go to the battlefield as a nurse. After Maragha, when the 13 boys she saved had recovered, the Anahid detachment was created under the supervision of Argadit at Hadevosyan. Barkir Serpazan also attached a group of 14 devotees of Russia's Holy Cross to this squad, forming the intelligence squad. From April 1992, Anahid Anahit Martirosian led the Anahit squad. That same year, the retreating enemy took up an unexpected position of Drombone and put up fierce resistance. The Anahit squad managed to surround the enemy and captured 14 people. Among them was Anahit's neighbor in Baku, whose father was Azerbaijani and whose mother was Armenian. On August 26, 1993, a shell exploded next to the brave Armenian woman in Marta Gert, after which she went blind for about six months. In 1992 to 1994, Marty Rosian took part in the self-defense of the Martakyat region of Ankara and the liberation battles. She was wounded several times since 1994. She has served in the area armed forces. Anahit Martirosian in 2010 received the Medal of Valor and in 2014 the second degree medal for services to the homeland. But the true and most sacred reward for our heroine is the liberated homeland and her heroic struggle. 
Ancient Armenian jewelry is renowned for its intricate designs and the use of various materials including gold, silver, bronze and precious stones like rubies, emeralds and diamonds. These pieces of jewelry were highly esteemed for their beauty and craftsmanship and they continue to be an essential part of Armenian cultural heritage. Modern Armenian jewelry manufacturers still produce these exquisite pieces today. Ancient Armenian jewelry often held symbolic significance. This sun symbolizing life and energy was a common Motive. Other symbols including crosses, stars, and animals such as eagles and lions. Armenian jewelry exhibited diverse styles and designs depending on the region. For instance, jewelry from the northern region of Lori was renowned for its silver craftsmanship, while the southern region of Sunik featured more gold and precious stones in their pieces. There is an intriguing story associated with Orme and Orme. Orme draws inspiration from the bronze bracelet with necklace like heads dating back to the Urartian period. This this artifact is currently housed in the Diligent Geological Museum's gallery. Our main mission is to revive the rich forgotten layers of history in its unique way. By revitalizing jewelry, they aim to reconnect with forgotten roots and rejuvenate one's own values. I appreciate the decision to address the Berzo Road issue at the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, as highlighted by Geram Stepanian, a human rights defender from the Republic of Artsakh, during a conversation with News AM journalist. According to Stepanian, it is necessary to adopt a resolution concerning the humanitarian situation resulting from the blockade imposed by Baku, and this resolution should accurately reflect the reality on the ground. He expressed his concern over the lack of sufficient international pressure of the government of Baku which allows them to act with impunity. Stepanian believes that appeals alone are not understood by the Baku authorities, and they will continue their activities until they face tangible consequences for their actions. He suggests that applying sanctions against Baku could be an appropriate response and may lead them to reconsider their behavior. Stepanian expressed disappointment with recent discussions within the EU, where economic interests seem to hinder the imposition of sanctions on Baku. The human rights defender emphasized that the Sarsang Reservoir is approaching an ecological catastrophe due to the energy crisis as its resources have significantly diminished. If the situation continues at the same pace, Artsakh will face an energy crisis during the upcoming winter. Stepanian hopes that this issue will also be addressed in the PACE report. He called for international pressure on Baku to prevent the people from facing the dangers of freezing or starvation. Stepanian specifically mentioned the expected support from Russia, the USA, France and the EU in this regard. The government of Western Armenia supports the emphasis of the Artsakh Human Rights Council on the role of international institutions in determining the fate of the indigenous people of Artsakh. However, the government stated that the Baku authorities are incapable of understanding humanitarian appeals and disregarding them continue to implement their oppressive policies. They believe that Artsakh must recognize itself as the sole master of its destiny and take responsibility for solving its problems independently, while acknowledging its status as a province of the state of Armenia established by Boros Nubar. The 53rd session of the United Nations Human Rights Council took place in Geneva on June 19. During this session, under the second item on the agenda, Faulkner Turk, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, presented a report on the current human rights situation worldwide. Regarding the South Caucasus region, Faulkner Turk urged both Armenia and the Baku authorities to prioritize human rights in their peace efforts. The commissioner emphasized the significance of ensuring free and safe movement along Berzo Road and keeping the civilian population away from humanitarian harm. Faulkner Turk highlighted that the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Human Rights had been working to gain access to areas under the effective control of the de facto authorities in the South Caucasus region for several years. He underscored that the absence of contact with UN human rights structures and the lack of regular monitoring make people more vulnerable. Access for the UN to these areas will enable human rights assessment response to people's needs and contribute to building confidence. The government of Western Armenia interprets the UN Commissioner's report not as a call for mutual trust but as a call for practical measures to restrain the aggressive and genocidal actions of the Baku authorities and restore the rights of the indigenous people of Artsakh. They emphasize that humanitarian aid alone cannot solve the problem. It only serves as a temporary intervention. The region requires stable peace and development. 
The French newspaper Le Figaro has published an appeal by over 170 deputy senators and elected leaders of France's Republican Party. They aim to raise awareness about the program and of Artsakh and the potential danger of massacres against the Armenian population in the region. News also reported on this issue. The statement released by the politicians emphasizes the need to sound an alarm regarding the planned termination of self-determination for the Republic of Artsakh and the threat of massacres targeting the Armenian population in the region. They highlight that Armenia has been in a weakened and vulnerable state since Baku's victory in autumn 2020. Negotiations for peace between Armenia and the Baku regime have been conducted under several power imbalances. Ilham Aliyev, the president of Azerbaijan, openly declared the ambition to starve and expel the 120,000 Armenians living in the unoccupied part of the Republic of Artsakh, while Baku, Russia's de facto and de jure ally, has imposed an inhuman blockade on the region for the past six months. The Russian peacekeepers who were expected to ensure free movement between Armenia and Artsakh, as well as the provision of supplies, have been deemed incompetent. Despite the International Court of Justice's decision on February 22 to leave the blockade immediately, Ilham Aliyev has not complied. Left alone without assistance to counter the aggressive and demanding aspirations of the heavily armed authorities in Baku, Armenia is currently striving to preserve its territorial integrity. In in light of this, the politicians issue an official appeal to the President of the French Republic urging France to intervene. They swear that France has an obligation to act because the Armenians of Armenia and Artsakh embody democratic values and serve as the vanguard of common Christian culture. Furthermore, they highlight the responsibility to protect as committed by France and the United Nations General Assembly in 2005. Politicians propose reconvening the UN Security Council to redefine the ongoing negotiations. They argue that accepting Accepting the negotiations as they were before Chisinau, which would absolve France and the West of their responsibility to protect the Armenians of Artsakh, akin to abandoning the Armenians of Cilicia in the past, would lead to an imminent war and destabilization of Armenia and the region, posing a danger to all. In a world where destructive and expansionist forces are advancing, France has capacity and the imperative to take the initiative to restore balance to the Armenian-Azerbaijani negotiations. Artsakh is Armenia and that's all. These words belong to Leonidas Galdian, a national hero of Artsakh, a physicist and a soldier who fought for this idea until the last moments of his life. As Galdian was among the first individuals who, during the protest of the 1980s, recognized that it would escalate into an armed struggle and began producing weapons with his friends. He actively participated in the national liberation movement from the early days of the Artsakh movement. As Galdian remained politically impartial throughout his life, upholding his principle. When asked about his political affiliation or party, he took a handful of earth from his lap and stated that it was his color, emphasizing that an Armenian soldier should have no political color. Leonid Asgaldian devoted himself entirely and decisively to the Artsakh Liberation War. He operated in the Shahumyan and Martagyat regions. In June 1991, to invigorate the struggle for Artsakh's freedom, Asgaldian and Hofse Povsepian established a military organization called the Liberation Army. This organization, in terms of coordinating the efforts of Armenia, Artsakh, and Western Armenia, represented a new quality in the chain of the movements dedicated to the survival of the Armenian people. As Gazian served as the commander in chief of the Liberation Army until the end of his life, on June 21, 1992, near the village of Donashen in the Martagat region, As Gazian fell in battle, killed by covert enemy fire. He was posthumously awarded the War Cross of the Republic of Armenia of the first degree. The government of Western Armenia commemorates and celebrates Leonidas Galdian's birth and death anniversaries each year. As Galdian is a remarkable figure in modern Armenian history, a man who united freedom-loving forces under a single banner and created a legendary liberation army, which holds a significant place in the history of Artsakh's liberation struggle. The fighting spirit of the Armenian army was nurtured here, where every soldier received extensive training from foreign instructors. It is a source of happiness and pride to acknowledge that the chief instructor of the Liberation Army was Almanak Abrahamian, the president of Western Armenia who traversed the battalion's battle throughout. 
From June 20 to the permanent exhibition of works by the famous Armenian seascape painter Hovane Saivazovsky will reopen at the National Gallery of Armenia, which includes one of the master's most important collections in terms of volume and artistic value in the world. The National Gallery informs that some 50 paintings and graphic works are presented to the public in the renovated and modernized rooms. Paintings on Armenian and biblical themes, peaceful and lyrical, turbulent and stormy, nocturnal sea scenes shrouded in a mysterious well. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. <laughs> 